August 11, 2002 Choosing a Patron Saint A number of years ago, I decided to determine who my patron saint is. I came to realize that the saint was probably a Saint John. I thought that perhaps Saint John the Theologian could be my patron. Beloved of the Lord, author of one of the Gospels, three epistles, and the book of Revelation, this saint could be a great help to guide me in deep theological understanding of God, of his plan for humanity, and of humanity itself. St. John came to this knowledge less by study and more by being in the presence of his God and Lord, Jesus Christ. It would be wonderful, but it just didn't seem to be quite right. St. John Chrysostom, the great Eastern Father of the Church, Archbishop, golden-mouthed preacher, and liturgist was another consideration. This St. John stands as a model for all Christians, but especially for priests, but it just didn't seem to be quite right. St. John Fisher and St. John Newman were courageous defenders of the Catholic faith, as a priest, I would certainly be called to do that, but it just didn't seem to be quite right. St. Francis of Assisi, baptized as John, presented an example that captivated me, to be sure. His spirituality was one of minority, personal conversion that leads to communion with others and in turn rebuilds the church proper respect for the priesthood and the church, respect for all creation that shares the blessing of the Incarnation, and more. This is a spirituality that matches very much my own. But this humble model of holiness seemed to direct me elsewhere for a patron saint. The truth of the matter is that all along I had been drawn to the person of St. John the Forerunner and Baptist of the Lord. I wasn't particularly ready to identify with his lifestyle in the desert, clothed in animal skins, eating locusts and wild honey. I thought that I could never follow his lead in courageously proclaiming the truth to the masses and to individuals, Herod in particular, that brought about his being beheaded. This St. John is, for priests and for all, a great model of how we must proclaim the good news. He called us to repent, to redirect our lives, not just our attention. He proclaimed a morality not based on man-made laws, but on our relationship with God. St. John insisted that he himself had little to offer except to prepare the way for one who takes away the sins of the world. I came to realize that St. John the Baptist has been given to me by God as my patron saint. We are truly called to decrease as the Lord increases. We are to allow the Lord to provide for us as we boldly proclaim the truth, never fearing that which may harm us. I chose for my episcopal crest a portion of the curtain of the heavenly bridal chamber with the figures of the Mother of God and St. John pointing to Christ the High Priest. In that icon, I see the church, men and women, old and young, of all backgrounds, directing ourselves to him who gives life. I see myself in the example of St. John the Baptist as one with a special ministry within the church. As I begin my Episcopal ministry, I renew my commitment to keep the example of St. John the Baptist before me. May I always allow him to teach me to accept only God's direction for my life and to allow only God to direct my ministry here in the eparchy of Parma. May I follow his lead in pointing others to Jesus Christ and may I never hesitate to say, Behold the Lamb of God.